Okay, so there we go. We're all off of that one. Pretty happy with the way it turned out. We've got all the panel lines showing through. If you have got any, you can just rescribe them, pop the wash back in, and away you go. We've got the tail planes on, so we've got a nice grimy effect going underneath as we wanted. Um, so we're nice and clean around, obviously, with the front where the shark's uh, face is, but certainly the rest of it, we've done it quite sort of dirted and grimed down to give this blue that nice grimy look, obviously, with the wash and just lightly wiped it off. So what will happen now, buttoned up the cockpit again, because what I want to do is give this a wash. So what we do is just check the framework around the canopy. It hasn't got any wash stuck all over it. Okay, which usually is something I tend to forget, so we just clean them out. Okay, so what we're going to use, I'm going to use um, Valero's uh, flat. I've just dispensed it from a big bottle into a long, but anybody's acrylic. Now it's had a bit of a shake, okay, and it's been left to stand just for a moment, a couple of minutes, and then we're going to pour it into the bottle neat. Air pressure is maxed out, okay. So we just test the flow, okay. So we'll just start with the underside and just very lightly. We're just going to blow passes onto this. We're not trying to flood it, we're literally just dusting this over to give this a flat look, okay? And then we'll come up over the front. Okay, and once we're on, we can literally just put one over. You should see it dull down as you go over. Okay. So we just slip it around to the other side, a tiny little bit more. Okay, and then just down on the other side. And then same time, we're going to do the fuel tanks, which is obviously we've painted up. And any other bits and pieces that need flat coating off, like doors and anything else. But what we're going to do now, we're going to leave this for a little bit to dry off. Okay, as soon as it's all dried off and we're all happy and then we can get along and start really bringing it together we get the weapons pylons on the rest of the doors on there and take care of all the little bits and pieces okay so we're moving along at a rapid place uh, getting near the completion so obviously we've got the gear on and we've placed on these geared doors and there's a couple of little activators gone in there as well the other thing is one the boarding ladder which is pretty straightforward um, that one just really going together as I said, no real hassle with that, just folds up and then goes on there and we've painted then the undersides of them and the little boarding one. The other ones we do have to be very careful of, you might be able to see, perhaps better on the here, on the close up we've got the IFF antennas up on the nose here, we've got a boarding handle up here which is a grab handle which is pretty hard to see, you might let you go see it in the light, it's just on there. They're the things you don't want to knock because obviously they're just going to fly up. Tiny little bit of super glue dunked in um, onto uh, a little bit of paper we've just got down here out of sight and then stuck on. Same goes as well for these deflectors. Now these little deflectors on the wing tips, where are we? There we go guys, there you are. Here, yeah, photo etch ones, very thin. Now I presume these are just to stop the landing lights blinding the pilot um, when they're coming into land and things like that. Uh, so they're on there, there again, tiny little bit, and then it's got painted on afterwards. The paint also acts as a way of welding it on there. At the same time as doing those bits and pieces on there, we've also put the sway braces um, on these actual um, uh, weapons pylons they've been painted painted them by hand just doing the camo patterns on the front there ready to go on um, just be careful when you do it as how they actually all go together because some of them tend to fit very nicely and slide in others don't I put a little nick in mine to cut them out but all they've got is a tiny once they're on there and glued in we just come along with some sort of gunmetal silvers and a quick touch in of the little sprue snips we cut off and in there just like so. So this is the last one of those to be done. Just like so. So just make sure you do your edges and the bits like that. So we'll leave that one out the way. Same time doing things like that, we obviously got on and we painted up the guns, these gun pods. I've got twin cannons in here and the magazine underneath. A bit of artistic license on this one to be honest so we've done the magazine as in gun metal we've done the barrels sort of burnt iron uh, those type of things uh, rocket pods there again we've done those as well they've just had a, a wash as well just with some black just to darken them up give them some tones so that's those done the other major bit of work we really worked on was the canopy area now we've got the clear part that goes on the top here 
Um, one of those things, just popped it down, a tiny little bit of glue, let that dry, and then hand painted it afterwards. And as you can probably see on the close up, we do have to be very careful. This photo etch, obviously, on the inside of this thing, it's not easy to do it because it sort of bends around. So, what I did, drop a super glue, put it in there. Uh, and then afterwards we're okay, but you might be able to see we've got handles and all sorts going on in here and we've got reflective mirrors and bits and pieces. And obviously when you see it's got a little scoop out the top on the actual aircraft itself, you would think it would hinge to the top, but actually being Russian, most Russian aircraft, they tend to hinge from the side uh, and will go on like this. But it's something we're going to leave to one side and obviously do it later. Exactly the same thing that's occurred with these fuel tanks. They've all been we weathered up and everything as well now. So they're all ready to go on. So that's really about it for those bits. The other bits we've got on there, photo etch whilst I remember, is we've got a couple of bits down the back here. Uh, there is a couple more bits to pieces to go on. We've got little antennas and various things like that to go onto the front. Trouble with those is you tend to knock them and knock them off. And to be honest, I've already had this IFF one off twice. So I'm not going to put any more photo etch bits on there just for the moment. We've got two things we need to take care of now. Firstly, uh, we've got these two front antennas, these little needle point ones, which are going to sort of glue on the front and come forward. They're going to have to go on. Okay, um, so we've got one for each side of those. So what we can actually do with that, the way I'm going to do it, is just put a tiniest bit of super glue just down on a bit, just down out the way. Okay, now even I get this one wrong, so I'm just going to double check my references to which was the one that goes on the left and the right. Okay, this one is the one that goes on the right. So what we're going to do, touch it into the super glue, just a tiny amount. Okay, and then what it is, we've got these parts just down here at the front, these little, so what we're going to do is just hold that on just for a second until it can bite. Okay. And once it's got a grip, we're just going to let that sit. And now we can look down at it and make sure it's square, it's pointing forward. Um, the blades are actually right. Now the thing is, if you're using this one, um, obviously the Edard incarnation you could use photo etch parts for these blades what I tend to did I just sanded them down just a little bit thinner okay because uh, quite frankly trying to get photo etch or to stay on something that's round is a real messy job I'm not very good at it and as they say know your limits and avoid it so we've got that one on there now normally I do this the other way but I'm gonna try and be brave here and do it at the same time Okay, so just going to hold that one on as well. Now we want these to be level, exactly together. So get down to it and have a look and make sure they're all pointing in the same direction. Let them dry just for a minute. And then what we're going to do, we've got some extra thin and we're just going to touch it onto them and let the weld action take care of anywhere that hasn't got super glue the super glue will hold it in place but then the weld action of this with the extra thin will melt it over the top make us a nice seal and what we've got here which is probably something I should have mentioned I hope you've watching this all the way through before but we've got some of the paint still knocked out it's got a skin on it but underneath here we've still got that original blue color on there it's always handy having these little pots and you can just put a cover over it and away you go because what I tend to do is I should have mentioned it at the time I just get a little bit of 40 mil tape, which if you go to a paint garage, you'll see them do the same. And all we do is when I'm not using it, I just pop it on like that. Okay, I can leave it for one side for the entire of the build, and that way I've got a color match that's perfect for this top half. Okay, so being very careful whilst those are drying, the next thing we can do is obviously installing the weapons pylons. Now, somebody asked me the other day, and I'm very sorry, I forgot your name, about um, how I'd managed to do it without making horrible glue marks and get them to lay flush. Well, to be honest, um, I spoke about it in a build a while ago, but we can recap. I've got here like a watchmaker's Phillips head screwdriver. And it's one of these tiny ones. You can pick these up in like the Poundland stores and everything else. What I do, I come along and I round out each one of the holes that it's going to go up and sit into. Now, we're not drilling it out. We're just literally counter sinking it just a little bit. So we just pop it in, give it a spin. Okay, and what it will do, it just makes a little countersink and it makes the them sit in there a lot nicer. Now the other thing you can do, if we just do half a moment, what it will do, it will cause a little bit of a raise, so make sure you rub that off, it should just come out of the way. Okay, the other thing you need to make sure of, 
as you're going around, if we can find what we've got here. Make sure when you've got it that you scrape away just the very, very top. So if you take your knife, because sometimes you get a seam line running down between the two. Okay, and all we do is just scrape them off. Make sure you've got rid of all the, the bits on there. Now, I've already pre-painted these, so this one is going to be a green one. So just for the moment, we know we've countersunk these, and green is going to be one of these. So I've got my finger behind it. All we do, we come along and push that on, just like that. Okay. Extra thin. Okay. Touch. And that's it. Leave it. Don't touch it. Don't move it. As soon as you move it or anything else like that, as soon as that actually starts to sort of wiggle around, you're going to melt the paintwork around it. But hopefully you can see on the cameras, we've got no gaps underneath it, everything else like that. And then all you do, you do the same for them all and work your way along. Test fit them first. Make sure they fit. Sometimes they're just nowhere near it and you have to worry about it. But that's just the quick and the simple way of doing it and the bits and pieces like that. The other point we've got to worry about is obviously this camera on the front, which normally is taking care of this clear bit of sprue here. But actually, when you come along, it's just it doesn't fit, it's horrible, it's not nice and everything else. Now, there's two ways around this. You could put a top of super glue in there, okay, and then literally um, a little bit of setter and make it rock hard and paint your own in. The other way of doing it is to get a clear piece of acetate and stick that onto it and do it that way. Because when you come along with this little guy, and I did have a, a play with this earlier, if you, it's an old trick I used to use, if you get the part and stick it onto a little bit like this, then what you can do, you can come along and see how it's gonna go. When you put it in, it's just, it's too big a hole and it falls straight through. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to get some clear acetate in a moment, once these needles are all dry on here, we can get underneath there, stick it to the front, mask it up around it, and then we'll have a nice clear camera pointing view. So what we're going to do, we're just going to let those bits dry off for a moment, and then we can get all the final bits on ready for the reveal. Okay, so as you can see, we've got it on its back now. Um, we've got a few of those other parts on board, and what we're going to do now is take care of this front. Now, as I said, it's one of those things, it's very tricky for you to see as well, but when we come along and fit this in, this thing will just drop straight through. Okay, if I bring you a little bit more, pushing my luck with my camera angle skills now, but if we just put you in like that, you might be able to see a little bit more what we're up to. Okay, so there we go, that's the, the problem. Um, and obviously the other problem is I want to show you what I'm doing as well at the same time. So it doesn't make for easy modelling. So what we've got is a bit of super glue, just down out of sight, okay, just on a piece of Tamiya tape. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just grab a cotton stick. Okay, we're just gathering some of this up. And we're just going to put a little bit around the edge. And see if we can't get this to hold. If we can get it to hold, then what I'm hoping is... I'll tell you what, I'm amazed myself sometimes. There we go, that's on there now and is actually holding, which is a miracle. So, what we're going to do, we're going to take some more super glue. Okay, now I'm not going to mess around with filler and things like that in here because what we want to do is literally get this in place and almost then hopefully forget about it. So we've got a big blob of super glue going in around it. Okay, now obviously we're not worried about super glue fogging and all those things at the moment. So we're just going to give this a squirt of kicker. And a bit of a blow, okay. And we're just going to come back and we're just going to put a touch more just around this edge because that's the problem edge, okay. Bit more kicker. He says must buy another can, okay. 
I know a lot of people don't like using super glue because it can make a mess, but I think you agree there. We haven't got really a mess happen there. We've got some shininess, but we can get rid of that a little bit later. But what that's done now, by using the kicker, it makes the super glue go a little bit soft, and actually then it has traveled round the outside and gone hard. So I'm actually quite impressed with how that has gone. We've got a couple of tiny bits to clean up, but once that is in dry, rock hard, I can get in there quite tight and we can paint around the outside, give the lens a little bit of colour, obviously a little bit of clear green perhaps, which seems to be the right type of colour for it, or a bit of greeny bluey colour, using the clears, and we can take care of that. And using our little pot of touch-up, we can lighten it slightly and get in there and just make it all very nice around. But don't forget, this is the front end, this is the business end, if it's going to have any chips, splats and everything else. And I know it sounds funny, but I was looking at a Sabre last year, the front end of it, absolutely covered in flies and grime and dirt and chips right where this would be and because this is flat obviously you'd get a lot of that as well so what we need to do is hopefully that's dried off so i don't want to play with it too much and i always tempt fate when i get in there and do these things what i'll do it's just going to wet a sanding stick and i just want to clean up that little front area and what I've got here, I've got the little mini drill, which has got a tiny bit of polish on the end of it. And we'll just try and polish up the clear part. Just like that. I'll tell you what, as I said before, sometimes I surprise myself. <laughs> but there we go, that is that on there now. So what we could do, we can paint around that outside just to touch it up. And for that, I'm going to use a tiny little bit of the uh, sort of the lighter grey we went around. Not the totally light one, but a lighter grey. You know, in the ideal world, at this point, you'd spray it. But we are not in the ideal world here. So what I want to do is just literally, with a, a nice little brush, something like this one will do nicely. Might be a tiny bit too big, but what we want to do is just come around a tiny bit of a gap still, just down on that side. So we're just going to fill that tiny little gap with some paint. dark edge just running down there and there we go that's that one in we'll let that dry off just for a moment we'll come back we'll give it a bit of a uh, a bit of clear probably going to use a bit of clear green on this just around those at the same time we're going to do those external lights and things like that and then i'm going to give it a bit of a wash with some um dark wash just to grime it up, tone it all down and put it the same as uh, the rest of the aircraft otherwise it's going to look a little bit odd having a clear bit. But considering that was one of the, my worry areas of the kit, if I'm honest, it's come along extremely well. Okay, so it's the final push for the end now. So what it is, it's all this photo etch parts, and there's loads to go on this one all the way over. So you can probably see on the close-up, we've got the cockpit totally finished off now. We've got that HUD over the top, and we've painted it. We just painted it in interior colour, and it's had a little bit of a dark wash, a bit of the Pro Models dark wash all over it. That's done. Cockpit's all done. We've done a few, few little placards, uh, which I made myself, which are tiny little bits of plastic painted, um, and then just slipped them into place. So it just gives a little bit more detail. You'll see a lot more of those on the close-up photos at the end. So we've gone around, we've put all of the little tiny, tiny, tiny little uh, angle of attack sensors. He says, trying to get you on the camera, which you go underneath the nose. You might be able to see on the close-up, we can lock in. You can see underneath there, we've got them on the sides. They're on the front. They're all over this entire aircraft. Now the easiest way to put them on is put a tiny bit of super glue on where you're going to come around, put a tiny bit on the part, then stick it to it. It's just a quick technique that I actually do. Aerial is on at the top, and I keep bending it, so I have to be somewhat careful with it, because it's come off twice already, and that's going to be the third time, so I can show you 
how easy it is to go on. So what I tend to do, using a metal object tool, something like this, if I move this down, so you have to worry about where you hold it now. Okay, and then all we do, get some super glue on the end of this guy here. So we come along, just touch him down. So you make a small, tiny little blob on your surface you're going on to. And then we just dunk this into the super glue. Okay, and then you just come along and just marry up the two. And you'll find, because there's super glue already on both sides, it grabs each other. If you do it on just one part, it tends to just basically stick and then will fall over and has a time. But you've got two, it tends to react together. The other thing to remember is when you're putting um, photo etch down, it's best to go onto a super glue with uh, clear paint to scratch it away first, then put it on, it'll weld on. Then you can just touch it up afterwards like I do. Touch it up afterwards by putting a couple of bits on there. So that's those bits on. As I say, it's very tricky to know where to grab this. As you can see, pylons are installed and they're all in there now. Very happy, and obviously we can add and take away the weapons as we like on there. The last major two points to go on is this canopy section, which as we said, is going to come along and it's going to fit just onto the side of this. So if we move this over a bit so you can see it on the camera, so it's going to come along and it's going to go just in here. Now, problem being is, ideally, super glue. It'll stick it in, it'll hold it in place, trouble is with super glue if you tend to touch it knock it it will fly off so what we're going to do we're going to do a double approach to this so we've got some of the PVA glue okay and we're just going to put a tiny bit of it all down this edge okay and then for the top side up here we're just going to pop a different because obviously it's not going to fog up that area and then holding the two quite carefully, we can hopefully come on in. And we should have the best of both worlds now when these fit together and dry off. So we just hold that just for a second to get that to lock in. So there we go, that's our cockpit on and installed. Now we have these little bars which are going to roll over and stick in. Now these are made of photo etch as well so they're very tricky to handle. And just check the old the instructions to see how this goes and it's going to go to round about the middle to the outside. Okay so we just bring this down a fraction. What we're going to do hold it somewhere slightly out of the way. If we hold this like this we can just Drop a super glue on each part. Okay, then hopefully you'll still see this. This one. There we go. That's that one on there, just like that, holding that into position. Okay, and then same thing goes. What you also you can do if you're putting super glue onto a very small point, okay, and you don't want to get it everywhere. If you use the blade of your knife, to be honest, I did this a minute ago. So clean the end of your blade of your knife off. Okay, just pick up a bit of super glue on the tip of the blade of your knife. Okay, and then you can just come along and put it in very, very precisely exactly where you want it and there we go that's on there now and I know it's going to be probably a problem to see if we bring this camera in as well hopefully you can see the that bar running across just down there like that so last thing to do we've got to do is get the lights on so we've done those already we've pre-painted those so we've got a tiny bit of super glue just on the actual uh, end of it itself so what we can do we can get these off off fit them on with a little tiny bit of pva glue and we're all ready for the final reveal and there we go we're all totally finished we've got the lights on the rest of the photo etch parts are all on happy how it's all sitting and everything else um one quick thing you might want to up the weight thing because it's almost a tail sitter but not quite, so we just about got away with that being a tail sitter. Um, with the weapons and the bombs and everything on like that, I'd probably be even closer. 
So you might want to up the weight by another perhaps two or three grams just to make sure. But as I say, it, it does work with that amount of weight, just it might be worth putting in a little bit more. Fantastic build, um, not an easy build. We've had a few problems um, with obviously because these side pods there are twin together and then everything else. So it's worth taking your time with this rescribing lock across the back of this one because obviously it really does stand out. And if you make a mess of it, don't worry, just fill it and start again and work your way through. And it is well worth going and rescribing all the panel lines. On this one, they're nice and sharp, they're standing out quite nicely. But certainly, if you were properly just to go straight in with it and are a little bit heavier with your paintwork, then obviously you might lose a lot of those nice panel line details and everything else. It's been a great build to work with, with doing different things and showing you guys different things as well. Certainly, I know a lot of you have mentioned about the camo work and things like that as we've been going through the build. As I say, one of those ones, it's nice, simple. You just have to break it down. Obviously, when you first look at this, you think, oh my God, how am I going to do it and all the rest of it. Just work through it, perhaps do a wing at a time, work your way around. And if it goes wrong, because you're airbrushing, it's really easy to repair because you can just go straight over the top. Don't worry about stripping it back and things like that and repriming. Just literally give it another coat right over the top and tidy it up. Yes, you could go around forever tidying up this type of camo and making it neater because in some areas it looks better than others and things like that. But once you're happy with it, it's worth stopping and just walking away from it and everything else like that. Lots of photo etch parts on this one, lots of easy ones to knock off because obviously we've got them all down here at the front, the cockpit and areas there like that. So we have to be a little bit careful how we handle this one now. Certainly underneath with this blue, the blue haze, it's a lovely colour to work with because as I said, it's one of those ones which is, uh, you first of all when you see it, you think that's quite an odd one to be. But when you work with it a little bit, it really does work well and it lends itself really well to weathering because by time you put a wash over it and a bit of grime it gives it that real blue grubbiness to it which is quite nice so this particular one we've obviously just fitted two fuel tanks and the guns um, but we could we've still got the rockets here and we could put them on and obviously we've got some air-to-air -air weapons as well and we could pop them on at a later date and things like that it's great doing something a little bit different um, so obviously these are the meat color ones like this one Obviously, you all see, a lot of you see the tiger meat colours, uh, and they're great as well because obviously they're all tiger themed. It's nice to do something a little bit different, and obviously being a fan of uh, sharks as well, it's a real pleasure to do this one. And having the shark on it like that one really does work well. There again, if you're doing it, you know it's artistic license with this guys. Unless you really want to make it exactly the same as that one is you know a photo and go for it like that that's fine personally i was going for an artistic one you know in some ways i think this one looks more like a shark the way i blended it and everything else than actually did on the aircraft but there we go it's been a fantastic build i thoroughly enjoyed it and i hope you've enjoyed it and if you have join me again next time